I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. We just finished up this piano. I have it like semi taken apart right now just for the convenience of the, of the video. Um, this is an old family heirloom. It's been in the family for, uh, I, th I think, almost since the beginning, which goes way, way back. Now, in the 50s, it was, it was very popular, very common to cut the pianos down. And there's even a journal article um, that, I've, that I've seen that gives instructions. I mean, it's from the 50s. It gives instructions to piano technicians on how to do this. Um, there's, a, there's a number of common benchmarks of, of what a cut-down piano has. So, for example, generally they, they take out the legs, they have this kind of um, more flimsy top, obviously the mirror. I th I've heard that the, that the idea was, because in, in the 50s, these big pianos, there's so many of them manufactured between 1890 and 1930, so many of them out there, but you know, 20 years after, or 30 years or 50 years after they were manufactured, they're not so popular anymore. And it was more the smaller little consoles and spinets that were fashionable. And so to give the pianos the appearance of, of a smaller console or spinet, a lot of people cut these pianos down and put a mirror on it. And it kind of has that illusion Unfortunately, um, many pianos suffered this fate, and it, uh, this was a short-lived trend. Um, let's let's actually look at. I mean, just so you can see the kind of travesty that, that this was. So, I mean, it was pianos like this. Come, you can come see it from the side here. Pianos like this that were not fashionable in the '50s. They would cut it down here, and then put a notch there. Um, replace replace this or, or you know with like cheaper wood that didn't necessarily match they would take out the leg take out the toe block cut it off here and then replace it with another leg so that the piano doesn't tip over and I mean look at look at these beauties like even I mean this is this is pretty standard for what I would consider to be like an old clunker um, and, and that one too you know these are both from that same era but uh, but you know, when these pianos are redone, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know, they sound incredible when they're redone with new strings and new hammers and dampers. And when they're refinished, actually, we're right, we happen to be right next to the refinishing room. Let's go see what they're working on. You can see, I think they're working on a Mason hammer. Well, yeah, all three, all three of the pianos in here. This is a Mason Hamlet on its back. Um, I guess, I guess we're not getting the full effect. There's a Kanavi from, from the 1890s. There's a bell um, that we're refinishing. When they're refinished, they are just spectacular. So, there's not, not much you can do. I guess, I guess this piano is as pretty as, as can be expected. It wasn't originally black, but they wanted to do it in black, and I think it looks really good. I think that's actually a pretty significant improvement. It, uh, you can't tell that this is this is not the same piece of wood as the rest of it, and so it just kind of all flows together much much better. Um, those pedals are original. I think they look great. We we replated them at our plating shop here, and we did the satin the satin finish. And it looks as good as I think it, it possibly could. Oh, and, it, and also this is another typical thing: is it didn't have the uh, the decal, so we put on the put on the decal. Okay. And plus, technicians like me, we have to be really careful that we don't break the mirror as we take it apart. I'm going to show you the inside. Okay, so inside here, most of the work I've, I've been talking really mo all, all strictly cosmetic so far, but. But the vast majority of the work that we did on this piano was on the guts. I guess the, the keys are, are functional, but they're still cosmetic. Um, so we created the keys and the sharps. Those are all brand new. The bushings, that's what holds, holds the keys in, in nice alignment. Then uh, they didn't want us to do a full rebuild, but we did. We still did a pretty significant uh, kind of hybrid rebuild refurbishing on this one. So. The bass strings are new and the, the bass tuning pins, whereas all of these strings 
they they look kind of nice and shiny, but they're actually original. We've just kind of scrubbed them with steel wool or Scotch Brite, just kind of remove all the corrosion, make them look good, and, and they and they sound good. The bass strings before they they sounded terrible. They they had bad bad what's called tubby tone, just kind of a thuddy sound, which is uh, very unpleasant. So we replace those. Of course, replace the hammers. Those are all new. Replace the shanks. Lots of leather and cloth. You can see, you know, at least the the rest rail there that's that's been replaced, and lots of cloth throughout. And oh, this piano we happen to also. This piano probably holds the record for the most soundboard work that we've ever done. I think ever, and we rebuild about 100 pianos a year and have done so for many, many years. And so for this one, holding the record, that's really saying something. So I'm gonna take you back there and show you something real quick. Um, but why don't, you, why don't we turn around and look at this before I show you that one. So the way the, way the soundboard works, it's right here. The, ooh, soundboard. <laughs> um, so the orientation of the, of the grain is this direction, and they're all glued together just the butt joint of the, the, the planks of, of spruce, they're all glued together. And then perpendicular to the spruce is this part here, and there's you know, a dozen of them or so. These are called ribs, and that's what holds everything together, keeps holds the crown, keeps everything acting, vibrating as one unit. So it's just a giant speaker is essentially what it is. It's a giant amplifier for the piano. And if you didn't have that, that soundboard, that, that speaker or amplifier, whatever you call it, um, the piano would sound kind of like the difference between, say, a, an acoustic guitar and, versus an electric guitar that hasn't been plugged into an amp. Like, if you've ever heard an electric guitar that hasn't been plugged in, it just kind of sounds tinny and, like, you can hear it, but it, it's not pleasing or it's not terribly enjoyable to listen to. Um, it has to be plugged into an amplifier. Okay. So on this piano, we uh, that there are there's there's one crack in particular that we, unfortunately we had to leave it in because we didn't we didn't uh, have the budget unfortunately on this one to to do what it really needed, which was take out the plate and take everything out and, and fill that crack, re put a shim in that crack, re glue everything together. So the crack is still there, but the uh, all of the all of the ribs are now. Property, properly back glued on to the soundboard, and so that that bad loudspeaker sound is totally eliminated. That's what that's what you get when when you have ribs that come unglued from that soundboard. Is the, the soundboard will vibrate against the rib, and it and it causes a a really ugly vibrating. It's bad. It's awful. It's like unplayable. Seriously. Um, when, when that's the case. And actually some, some technician in the past had actually repaired it, not by trying to glue them together. I, I, I can only assume he was probably in a pinch, maybe he was there tuning it. And, um, and the, the lady said, oh, by the way, will you fix that awful sound? And he probably had five minutes and was going to his, probably had a tuning, you know, that he had to get to. So he's like, yeah, I'll fix it real quick. And so what he did is he put a shim in between the rib rather than gluing it together what he should have done is say yes i can fix it but i need to set another appointment i'm, I'm just this is all conjecture i'm guessing so he should have glued it back together but what he did is he put a shim in between the soundboard and the ribs to pull it out further so that when the soundboard vibrates it's so far it's now so far away from the ribs that it can't it doesn't vibrate touching the rib so that's that's where we were at i mean it was okay let's come back and see it now that i've Explain the heck out of that. Okay, so here is the crack in the soundboard that runs all the way, and that's a big, that's a very, very big crack. And so all of these repairs, that, I guess there's another little crack there. These are all areas where we we've, we've injected glue. We use just a syringe um, because when you when you push on it on push on the soundboard, you can actually open that um, open that gap enough that you can get a syringe in there, inject glue, 
And these are all areas where, where we've used screws essentially as a clamp to tighten that together. Um, and then after it's dry, we take the screw out and drill that out and put a, put a little shank in there. So it's back all wood again. There's not a metal screw in there. And you can see, I mean, like there's a lot of repairs all along another one over here. These ribs were not attached like any of them were attached to the soundboard because so you can just imagine how bad this piano sounded um, it did not sound like it sounds now i'm going to play it for you now it sounds big and rich and full really happy with how it turns out oh, it rolls fairly easily too we can take credit though got new casters on there. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of work. It, sounds, it was some money, but like to, to rebuild to this level and make, take it from how awful it must have sounded. Um, I can't remember if I did it before the video or not. Um, but uh, how bad it sounded before with the, with the vibrating soundboard and the shim in there and, and all those ribs that were loose so the soundboard's not really acting as one unit. That giant crack. Now the, cr now the crack is really just an afterthought. Um, it's still there, but, but it's not a big deal. It just doesn't affect the sound. Um, anyway, so so you know these people didn't want to spend the, the money like I was saying to, to do a complete restoration, but to get it to this level um, was was actually pretty economical, um, and that sounds great with with those new bass strings, with, with the new new hammers and the dampers. It dampens really really well. It dampens really really well. Um, with, with especially we, we put longer longer dampers in the base than, than it was originally manufactured with, which makes it make it makes it cut off much better than it than it uh, did you originally. Anyway, so I would say I would give it give us considering where this piano was, considering what has been done to it in the past, considering the. Um, frankly, abuse, not intentional abuse, but uh, all of those factors, considering how good it sounds now and how good it looks now, I'd say this, this piano was an A-plus for Brigham Larson pianos. 